Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon listeners. Um, Modu, if you can hear me, can you just let me know? If you guys can hear me loud and clear, let me know, please. Thank you. Whilst I um, share this video, uh, just let me know from the comment section. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, today is um, Wednesday, the 12th of July 2023. Time just gone eight minutes past seven in the evening in Birmingham, England. Um, we are going to have a brief discussion on this um, asset, asset recycling. And unfortunately, um, I was meant to have an interview on the Freedom pl Platform with Alaji uh, Salunjai. And um, we, we would have an extensive uh, uh, coverage on this matter. Uh, but unfortunately, some hiccups from his side, he can't uh, make the interview. But hopefully tomorrow, we're going to re record that interview. And uh, we will share our views very ex extensively from that end. The um, Why am I loving these interviews is from somebody's point of view, asking the question. It's, it's, it opens up the dialogue. Uh, uh, um, better than um, than uh, presenting uh, or, or just um, having a monologue on on the subjects. Um, why do we have this program? Um, I have to come because I am just filled with a lot to share, and um, because how important this uh, issue is. This what uh, presented by the finance minister as an asset recycle. A fancy word or another word for mortgage, uh, mortgaging an asset. Uh, I mean, that's what it is. But again, I am encouraged uh, by the interest of, uh, that people have in it. I am part of forums, but a, spe a particular forum, for that matter, have been discussing this matter. And uh, why am I really, why um, this particular forum, people from accounting background, economics background, people from engineering background are sharing their ideas. I am learning a lot from those ideas, and those are some of the ideas um, info um, that we want to share. Um, I mean, on this platform here, I wish we had those platforms in the open. Uh, for one reason, uh, Gambians don't want to be in the open to be heard, uh, but. They want to be in clusters to, to discuss, but I wish all these experts, we have people with experience, people with professional backgrounds, will be available to discuss this 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 issue. Um, now, the, that's the reason for this program. It's a quite an um, important program. I again, um, it's a PPP pro project. What I mean by that is, it's a public pri public private partnership. Uh, it's nothing new. It's been going on, and um, we we are not expert in it because we are not expert in accounting, economics, or engineering whatsoever. But we have lived in countries that have exercised this. We have seen the pros, the cons, and um, we know our government and the people around our government and how these things come out. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to start with first is actually to share share an insight we had before. If you bear me a minute, um, actually what happened is we, because there's a lot of issue to deal with coming to this uh, uh, project as anything this government does. In April, 
in April, Open Gambia exposed that there was a under um, there's a underhand dealings behind the scenes between the finance ministry and the government to mortgage the Senegambia bridge. It's not new to me. What's uh, been um, shared here is not new to me because the insight of government have discussed it with us and those people are not happy about what was happening. And um, I, will read, I will read the post, the article. Sorry, I'll read part of the article that was published by the Open Gambia platform. And the uh, article re, uh, titled, President Barrow and the Economic Cartel Continue Looting the State Assets. It says, this is from a government insider. Incredibly, top officer in Barrow administrations are reportedly upset about the President blanket endorsement of a cartel ongoing expansion of a total grip on the Gambia economy, as is too often the case then again, a high-level contact in the economic cartel group confirmed this idea uh, is indeed accurate. We had an information from inside the government, and that person have named a group of cartel mem uh, economic cartel members uh, that are interested or pushing ideas around selling of government assets or acquiring government assets one way or the other. And what we did was to try to use that information and find out, and it was confirmed from within these groups that yes, there are people who are pushing these ideas, and uh, it might be, it might, it's likely to be not to be interest of the, uh, the to the people. And uh, it it continued. The article continued. He, uh, the person said, "Let me repeat what we what we know," but it. It is mind-boggling that City Keta has convinced President Barrow to privatize uh, uh, Senegambia Bridge Management to a company named Withheld for now. Uh, here, here is the main point. There are plenty of reasons to believe these people constantly need money to private, uh, to private liquidate problems and many more headaches. This person was telling us, look, this is what is happening. City Keta have convinced the president that they can raise money by, look, I mean, privatizing this bridge management. And the reason they're doing it, they need money. They're in desperate need of money for their, I mean, what they want to do. I'll get to that need of money. I don't know where this is going, but uh, I continue the article, sorry. I don't know where this is going, but here, what, what worries me, the corrupt technocrats are desperate to maintain power to continue their quest for cashing in significant time and enjoy massive benefits. And how would they get away with this? And some, something of this magnitude, which is tremendously vital to our national security and foreign policy should be debated by parliament, which I agree. The person said, and look, these people are going through, through this, I mean, something very important, what, how they're getting away with this, why they're getting away with this, because they are doing things without people holding them accountable. But in, the, in this case, this is so much important, it should be debated in parliament. The person continued to say, once again, this is pure nonsense and also a teach, uh, teachable moment. Even, even more important, the financial minister has seriously convened and con uh, considered privatizing the management of the bridge and getting kickbacks through price gauging and ex 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 exhibiting toll collection fees. This is an allegation has been made against the finance minister. These are the people that knew, knew each other that they are doing this in order to get kickbacks and the tolls will be high and, and, and so on. So there, there you have it. There are no limits to their grit. It is not just that. It's all beg, uh, beggars, uh, the, the, the question why. This is uh, a premeditated idea coming from a model like ripoff of our airport. This is, he's saying that it's what they're trying to do is similar to what they did to our airport. Exploit it and for a private company to come in and they had to get their kickbacks. And obviously it's not going to be limited to, 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 to the Senegambia Bridge. It's going to go onto others if we allow it to happen. Moreover, there are essential lessons for the rest of us to learn from the mindset of these people and their controversial ideas. In all seriousness, somehow, everything this man has done ends up causing embarrassment and concern. If they, pro uh, if they proceed with this plan, it will be a costly strategic failure that will continue to hurt us for a long time. This is the concern this person raised. He's saying that city scatter have been a disaster since he came into the ministry. Remember, it's the same syndicator who said, oh, it was a good idea that goods are being embarked now in Senegal and coming by land to the Gambia. 
But the same city Keta came back and because when he was trade minister, but the minute he assumed the finance ministry, it's a different story. Oh yeah, this is hurting us. This is hurting our revenue and it's hurting our economy. Same city Keta. And this guy called the, I mean, Atukul continue. What would explain that this uh, this is disturbing to to say this? However, they 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 uh, uh, they, they learn the lesson about those uh, immobile ferry purchase during the Jammeh era mil uh, military regime. But I am not holding my breath. Let's take a further step back. To the contrary, uh, how, haven't they learned how privatization wrecked G GPMB and caused us to go dangerously into debt? It seems we are ab uh, about to find out what the uh, Ketabaro um, economics, Ketabaro economics uh, stand for. Um, and this is, I mean, the main uh, uh, um, body of the article that deals with the breach. And I disagree with the GPMB notion, uh, uh, the privatization of GPMB. I think that was one of the uh, okay privatization that done, but that, that's one other day. That's one other day. Now, this was the article. Let me try, if, um, I've written an article on this. Um, even though the article was drafted uh, about a day, day before to reaction to this, if you bear me a minute, um, I will read the article written on, uh, on this, uh, which is going to be published tomorrow, inshallah, tomorrow. Um, and the article is, what are the details in the mortgage of Senegambia Bridge? It's important to know the details. The devil is in the details. And that's why we are continuing in this discourse. And today we are going to play the interview uh, from West Coast Radio, which is a brilliant interview. And it had uh, av availed us a lot more information that we can debate. We need to debate this, and I hope people take interest in this to make sure we scrutinize it as much as possible. Uh, my, my, the, the article written, uh, I, I said, um, uh, what are the details in the mortgage of the Senegal Bridge? We need to know the details. The article starts from most people only learn of the mortgage of our critical strategic asset, Senegambia Bridge, to the private entity uh, Africa 50 from Finance Minister Sidiketa following his interview with the International News Network, CBNC. The, uh, the minister called the public private partnership arrangement as an asset recycling. This is what we learn. It's interesting we did not learn this from. Uh, uh, what is happening on the ground. It's not from parliament, not from the government consultations or anything. But we learned this because of the gov uh, The minister is out of a way there having to speak. Need the private uh, entity wanted to people to hear uh, what they're doing in order for them to drop up business or hype or whatever it is. And they got our minister to, to talk to them about this. This is the level of disrespect they have or the way they conceal the things they do and just bamboozle it to us whenever they like. The article continues. Their critical transparency and accountability is regarding this financial arrangement. Many questions jump to mind, such as one, did the government conduct an intensive uh, stakeholder consultation, including with the Senegalese counterparts and the public? Transparency is key in order for us to do something effectively. And that transparency, what it meant is consultation. People needed to be consulted. Stakeholders who play a vital role in making things happen within that sector needed to be consulted in order for us to hold them accountable. There's a major problem here. We just heard about it there. I heard about it from the grapevine, and that was a very critical uh, um, opinion. Now we are taking it from, from, from the outside, bringing it from the in, instead of from the in to the out. But again, I said stakeholders, uh, and this is the, 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 the transport union, these are other um, and people who are uh, playing a vital role in, in the business of that bridge. But again, Senegal. Senegal is a strategic partner in this development. Even for the bridge to be built, Senegal pushed for it, and the funding, they played a vital role in mobilization and makes, making sure so this bridge is realized. But again, it's going to affect the, how the bridge is managed is going to affect their economy hugely, hugely. Then if this uh, uh, bridge, uh, the negotiations are to be fruitful, the, 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 the management is to be realized and, and, and beneficial, Senegal would have to be consulted and all this taken on board, then they can come up with the concept and, 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 and something fit for purpose. Two, 
Was there any competitive international bidding? Were, were there any? How did they come up with one company? <laughs> Obviously, that's where the suspect is. How did they come up with one company? If the government have a brilliant idea, or this is what we want to do with our assets, in order for the government to maximize the benefit, they should do something competitive. Do what? Put it out there for the domestic and international to look at it. And you see, this would have been a perfect uh, um, uh, area where the government would consult a local consortium with a diaspora funding. And, and this local consortium can, could have come in in the set of creating that vehicle so that people in the diaspora and in the Gambia, Gambians in the diaspora and within the Gambia, who have the means to put, uh, I mean, I mean to, to fund this, this venture, and we will not need a private entity from outside. Any profit realized would be going paid to Gambians, and those Gambians obviously will be reinvesting in the Gambia. This is how we create wealth, wealth for a country. Not to give your, your a prime asset to a private entity to come and run it, make profits, and that profit is used somewhere else. This is should be, and um, we have in, seen in country where dams, dams are, are spawned, I mean, funded from the diaspora, projects are funded from the diaspora. They could, this could, if a consultation was done right, this was the area the diaspora could come in and people would can buy, buy use $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 to buy shares and have a share of a uh, running of that uh, entity if the government needed cash, I mean, urgently. I mean, there are Gambians, uh, businesses in the Gambia, there are people in the Gambia that can invest, Social Security could invest, uh, my, the, 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 the pensioners, uh, um, I mean, mo I mean pensions, uh, pensioners pension into it, and this is the way, I mean, we generate. I mean, the insurance companies can invest and, and everything else. This is the way it should be done if we had that consultation and, and it could have been open, uh, I mean, the bid could have been open. We could have realized over 100 million. We could have realized over, over 100 million with better terms and conditions. Uh, but again, the third part is, according to uh, the article, I don't remember ever hearing something so fundamental as this being discussed at the National Assembly, which should be a must to safeguard our national interests, considering this administration poor track record in contra uh, contracting public-private partnership. This should have been a must, a must. But again, we know how useless our National Assembly is. It's a matter of the state, uh, the government coming to mention this and one or two and it push and goes. That's why we need a public consultation. We need uh, civil society to get in there. We need the pressure out there so that if we have to go with this, we come out uh, with a win-win situation. And as I said, a diaspora initiative which should have been one that could have been considered where the mainly diaspora and Gambians within the Gambia who have the means to buy the shares to operate it. This should have been uh, looked into. The, uh, my, my, the, my article continue to say uh, PPP, PPP arrangement. Generally, uh, um, I mean, what government does, we know. They are trash, bad track record. Every PPP they did was bad for us because of what the people that, that, that go to negotiate this, they are incompetent. But the most thing is they are compromised because all they look for is what they get from the contractor. Now, the contractor determine everything else. We have seen from Simplex to everything that have negotiated by this government have been uh, a disadvantage to us. The structure should have been under, uh, undergone due diligence to avoid uh, entangling the state in a terrible contractual agreement like the security port uh, levy, uh, security levy. This should have been done. A very proper due diligence should happen. Should happen before this goes. But we have not, I hope, we, this, uh, the political party will come out and debate this and hold government to account. Not only parliament as such. We, I hope civil society will do that. And I, I encourage Gambians, as I said, the, there's a forum I am, they are debating this, people with expertise, but I hope and I'll find a way to get their permission to get their opinions shared. I am doing that for that matter here. Some of what I am sharing is from something I learned from them or something I picked from other people's contribution in the forum. We need this to be uh, discussed openly so that I mean uh, we can hold this accountable. 
that uh, I said there's a lot of public skepticism given this government track record. However, had they done this uh, transparently with due diligence and the process in, uh, invested in and the proceeds, sorry, uh, pro, uh, pro, proceeds invested, um, um, and the proceeds invested. Uh, da, 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 okay, there's a lot of public skepticism given this government track record. However, had they done this tra transparently with due diligence and the proceeds invested in the social economic development, helping towards sustainable development goals, there wouldn't have been this level of public outcry as it will be seen as a win-win situation. If the consultations, due diligence, and everything is done well. And, and I have to a point that we, the government goes with this, we would have been having our blessing and we would not have had this outcry. Uh, the reaction is due to the way things are handled and obviously the poor government track record. We, that's why we are skeptical of it. If not, we would have looked at it as a win-win situation. But again, if consultation was done, a better means of doing things would have been realized rather than a group of people behind the scenes come up with an idea and just go and select uh, uh, an entity from outside and give it to the entity and let's say cast blank uh, and, and we are going with this. That's completely wrong. Um, I continue to say the journalist who interviewed uh, Minister Keta appear to lack the necessary background knowledge of the Gambia financial and economic affairs to tackle the minister waffling deliberation on our financial and economic development matters. You see, they have a foreign, uh, um, in how to call it, foreign journalists to interview. The foreign journalist seems not to even know nothing about Gambia for that matter. Probably he just, he's out there in fact to pump out. You see, some of these interviews, you have to be very careful. What it's, it's about is a PR. It's part of their PR. Oh, let's put visibility out there. Let's, oh, Gambia is going to do this. There's a lot not to, uh, talked about there. And the guy doesn't have what it takes to ask the questions, relevant questions. If he had known about Gambia, he would have asked Keta. But Keta was out there wobbling, wobbling from one, repeating himself there many times because there were no interesting question to come. That's why it's interesting today. We, when we have heard from, uh, when we heard from West Coast Radio, Peter Gomez have done a brilliant job with that interview, and we're going to play that interview and do a review of that interview for us to continue this discourse further. Continue um, to say, um, uh, Minister Keta uh, um, emphasizes the presidential ambition to build thousands of kilometers of road from a similar, uh, from a similar infrastructure asset recycling and nothing, uh, uh, nothing on reinvesting into the social human capitals. The government priority significant, uh, government prioritizes significantly in infrastructure projects for political and potential for massive corruption procurement practice benefits. You see something about this. The minister was out there, or oh, the president ambition. I think he said that four, three to four times, if I'm right. President ambition to build thousands of kilometers of road. Why this obsession of road and bridges? It's a political project. Two, why not, not, why not talk about the investment of this into our schools, our healthcare, and, 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 and into developing and the human resource capitals of that country? No. That's not to their interest. But I mean, for, for one thing, for African politicians, they believe that the Africans only are move when they see structures. Africans, they think that Africans are not smart enough to realize that the condition of living have improved and they will vote according to that. No, they will believe in infrastructure. And I'll tell you this. <laughs> this is the same model that Ablaiwava development plan is. It's the same model. It's nothing new here. Borrow money, go for the capital bonds, go for this, go for that, go for it, and, and build all the stadiums, infrastructure, and everything technically in the same cosmopolitan area rather than invest. And you see the poverty within these uh, areas that this infrastructure have been built, you sorry for yourself. Because there's no capacity to be built in the people, there's nothing done to develop the social uh, the, 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 the strength of the people, the economic, uh, um, so that they can participate, included in the economic growth of that country. No, everything is measured to, to those infrastructure developments. And what did this create? That's why today you see the joblessness and everything else in Senegal, uh, which part of what galvanized the youths and made them crazy, I mean, to go against this government when there's a demonstration. But again, you can see the thousands of Senegalese youths, just as Gambians and other Africans that, that use the same model to development uh, are taking the back way as it is. It's not the right model for investment. We need to invest in our people. 
Look at what the Senegambia bridge it actually is not done to Soma and Farafeni. It has killed business in Soma and Farafeni because of the, the social consideration that have been done. The impact assessment on society have not been done right. And to look at the, uh, the, the implications to how would it affect our economy and the trade within those areas have not been done and nothing in place for that. And it, I mean, the trade just die off. And the article final, I mean, continue to say, uh, yeah, and the, uh, why do they like these infrastructure projects is how they would do procurement and, 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 and to benefit themselves by in corruption. And uh, it continues to say, from the minister's statement, it seems the government's next step will be to mortgage our telecoms, energy, road, and bridges, bridge infrastructure via the PPP asset recycling. Um, are the government ministers preparing for their early retirement by casting out our state assets for pittance? Uh, the National Assembly, political parties, and civil society should be vigilant and call for transfers and accountability on this asset recycle model to ensure proper consultation and necessary due diligence to maximize return to the country. This is uh, what I've written. I'm going to share that tomorrow morning uh, on the Open Gambia platform. And as I said, we are not against this government taking initiative that will develop that nation, but we want it to be done right. And I'll tell you one thing. I, I cannot go in detail in that, but probably in the Freedom, Freedom Radio, I might be allowed time to do that. You see, this economic cartel we're talking about, these are the people, I think, these are the same people looking after the succession planning for President Bell, for President Bell to retire. And part of this project they're doing is part of to realize the end of money. And, and these, these are the people now directing the way the government is run. What they're trying to do, do is build all these projects in order to prepare, not for President Bao, but for their chosen candidate to run on that. Their government continuity. They're looking for government continuity. And the corruption would be huge because of the proceeds of this money and, 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 and the neglect that will happen later will be realized later when they have served so long with us. This is what they're doing. Remember, it's the same government that irresponsibly went and borrowed that much. How much they borrowed, you see, I don't have the figures on head. Again, we all knew, uh, combined Jawara 30 years and Jamme 22 years, they have borrowed in seven years far more, and we have not realized anything. Gambians today are poorer than ever. We have seen the inflation and everything else. This is the same government that took almost 100 million from your central bank and said to you that, look, we cannot tell you who we give this money to. This is the same government that sold assets of, of Jamme and still cannot account for those as I mean, proceeds. That's why we have to be very careful and hold this government accountable for what they do. If you uh, bear me a minute, let me cite for this um, audio and, and, and play this audio uh, and we respond according to uh, uh, the deliberation. Uh, I mean, uh, deliberation. Sorry, guys, I wish I was good at multitasking to read your uh, uh, messages. I'll take a minute, let me take a minute and say, see you some of your messages. Okay, thank you. Now I am going to play uh, the West Coast Radio interview that uh, the uh, finance minister, um, Sidi Keta, the infrastructure minister Ibrahim Sisi is Ibrahim Silla, sorry, Ibrahim Silla, infrastructure minister uh, with Peter Gomez. And um, I will stop, I will play a bit, stop, and I will review what my what my take is on that. And um, yeah, that's where the program is going to go on now. If you just bear me, let me increase the volume and you let me know if it's coming loud and clear. You're listening to 92.1 West Coast Radio 2. Two headlines in today's papers catch my attention. The standard reporting that the majority leader reporting that the majority just be a minute, minute. I want to be late. I want to bring it to the 10 minutes mark where its interview start. Okay, let me try this. A conversation between two people in the studio and one on the phone would be no problem. 
but our fixed line isn't working normally at the moment so we have had to let me know if you can CD hear it loud and clear mobile phone so cd you may have difficulty hearing your colleague mr silla when he pops in that shouldn't be a problem because you are the main player here and to start us off thank you for introducing a new term in our national development parlance asset recycling from the reaction you are reading and hearing do you think thank the you. concept of asset recycling is well understood by those writing and commenting about it in the media well uh, first of all thank you very much and good morning to you and your listeners and uh, it is our pleasure uh, to respond to the questions raised on the transactions we are conducting as a government and first of all i will begin by saying that as a recycling of a cash flow producing asset is very normal in an infrastructure space uh, by that we mean is when you have an asset that produces a predictable cash flow over a reasonable period of time into the future it is very normal financial uh, it's a very normal financial transaction to collateralize those cash flows to serve as a security for issuance of a bond or issuance of a security that will give you, the owner of that asset, access to cash for you to deploy while the cash flow stream will go towards servicing the obligations that are from those assets uh, back security. And this is done everywhere from toll roads to bridges to mortgages. So what we are doing here, maybe it might sound new, uh, here, because it's a first time of its kind, yes, but this is not new in the financial balance. So we are not doing what is new in the financial arena. This is very standard financial practice in developed capital markets. And what we are doing, we are not doing it single-handedly. We are doing it with a renowned partner that is Africa 50. What are we doing? We are not selling the assets. Absolutely. We are rather using an innovative financing mechanism to raise resources that will not add to our desktop, but will generate the cash flows required for future development. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, the hundred million that is the subject of this transaction, it is not a debt because the investors are taking the risk of the cash flows of the asset. Mm -hmm. So it is a bankruptcy remote structure. And we may need to go into this transaction for people to be at ease. We've not sold any national asset. This bridge has a lifespan of reasonably over 50 years. And the terms of these transactions are as follows. One, a period of 25 years or upon the investors realizing an internal rate of return of 15%, whichever comes first. So it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's in a transaction where it's not a linear, whereby the asset or uh, the uh, security owners will have rights to the cash flows for the next 25 years. No, it is linked to the target IRR of the transaction. If the, tra the traffic volume increases so that the IRR of the investors is realized in 10 years, in 5 years, in 7 years, in 20 years, then the asset reports back to the state. And what we are doing here, we are not only stopping at that, we are also having an SPD, special purpose vehicle, that is now the sponsor of the asset back security on which the transaction right. Okay, um, let me just um, get into that. It's interesting that um, now he's talking about to let the people know. Uh, that's what I pointed out that they did not try to start up from explaining a policy point of view. As a government, as a government, uh, they should have explained that this is a new policy they try, they're going to do in order to re realize revenue. And people who lived in the UK or people who have followed uh, United Kingdom's economic performance or management would realize when the new Labour government came in under the stewardship of Gordon Brown as the ch Chancellor, that's the uh, uh, Finance Minister, um, they, they, they spoke about this. Part of what they're going to do was to raise in order to meet the infrastructure deficits in the social uh, um, sector. This is about because uh, for for 18 or 20 years, 
the conservative government did not build new schools. They did not invest in new school, uh, schools. They did not invest in uh, housing. They did not invest in, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the healthcare sector and so on. They said this, we are going to go for the model of a PPP. That's private partnership uh, this thing in order to, 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 to realize this within this period of years so that we have new housing, or the new housing estates would be revamped. And they went into a concept of what? Uh, the housing estates were taken up, most government housing estates were taken up by, by charity, charity organizations that have specialized in housing, you know, and, and to manage these things, they invested and, and redeveloped these houses uh, in that. In certain instances, some of the estates were given to private sector, which revamped and increased the capacity, I mean, the, 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 uh, the affordability of housing and so on. That model was look into housing and so on to regenerate. It was called the regeneration program. And many, or gentrification, some people call it, or whatever it is. And it became a success in many areas. Now, what this does for, in a sense, like what the labor government was doing is putting government borrowing of the blank seats in order to manage the economy and inflation of this uh, uh, government would not uh, go out of control. Now the debt would be seen as something taken over by the private sector and managed by the private sector. That's one thing there. Two, it was the speed they wanted to fill the gap. Uh, the, other, uh, the other model from the PPPP was the uh, private companies to come and build hospitals and run the hospitals for a period of years, 50 years or 25 years or whatever agreed, depending on what's going to be involved. And the government would be paying when the hospitals start to operate a certain amount towards the operation of those hospitals. Again, that means that during the course of building the hospitals until they operate, government have no obligation to pay uh, any penny to the project. The, the government start to pay when this hospital become operational and, and, and run by this private sector. That was uh, one another aspect of it. The, 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 the third aspect was um, in education. Schools were built, rebuilt, or, or something built by private sector and uh, after the finish of building and everything, government started to pay towards those schools. But another aspect too was uh, corporate bodies. Uh, they uh, um, introduced what we call the academic system. Like the big companies, like uh, um, I mean, corporate companies would do is they would uh, uh, sponsor a school and they would run the school, like a secondary school based on the ethos of their company. An accountancy firm, like, uh, um, I mean, accountancy firm would decide to build a school and run the ethos and uh, these things on, 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 on accounting. They did similar things. We are not new to this. There's nothing new here. I mean, any fancy word they give it is a remorgaging. In, in this sense, it's not selling assets, which is true. To an extent, it's not selling the assets. It's about remortgaging your assets. You have a house that you paid for. You already paid for your house, you have your house. Now you're going to a, bo I mean, going to a bank, approach the bank and ask the banks to give you a certain amount and they manage the house for you. They rent it out in, until you get your money back and, and a profit of up to 15%. Whenever you realize that money, the profits, then the asset will come back to me. But the bad thing is here is too, you have not discussed this. This house, you, you, you have a responsibility for the house, but you don't own the house. The house is owned by the people, and this house is functional as an operational base. There are other entities are using this house to operate. It's not that you are going to rent the house to an individual. This is a, a house that many things will come through. Vehicles will come through. I mean, uh, private vehicles will come through, commercial vehicles will come through, industrial vehicles will come through. But again, this is a corridor, and part of the corridor is an ECOWAS corridor, and it's a corridor instrumental in Senegal having to move from the north to the south. Now, consultations should have been uh, this thing. The second part is, the difference is, you did not look at, uh, out there to put a bidding, ask for a bidding in the international wall to say, that, look, this is what I'm going to do. I have an asset here which is uh, realizing revenue now, but I need revenue quickly. I need money now, quickly. I need a hundred million. 
Now, if you want me to mortgage this asset to you, I mean, come, we have a discussion. But if you have gone to the international to do that, or you look at it, as I emphasize here, they should have looked within. Look at in the Gambia and the diaspora, and look at that. We have, a, I mean, this is what the government want to do. In other, you know, when uh, British Airways was sold, um, many things were sold. British citizens mainly bought a lot of shares in it. And many, many, many became middle class. Some middle class became something else because when they started to get the profits, they reinvested here. That's why it's important that something like this should happen. 100 million, I tell you, that's achievable. I mean, diaspora from 10 to 15 thousand dollars. Shares can, I mean, some people might even put 20, I mean, cash into their pensions. I mean, I mean, to invest there uh, or other investments, they can take it to invest there. It's a secure, it's a secure investment. This is a secure is investment. Why not leave it to the citizens to, 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 to benefit from it? Because the citizen benefit, the government benefits more. Because end of the day, we make money, we pay dividends, we're going to pay tax. We pay dividends, we are going to reinvest in the country. It should have been considered. This is my uh, 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 first observation on the first uh, points uh, um, um, shared. And the other base we have to look at is when he talked about the, uh, the, the, the lifespan of the, uh, the, uh, the bridge, he said 50 years. But that 50 years is it dependent on how the bridge is maintained, on maintenance, on maintenance. And remember, if the bridge gets to a level that it, it's out of its lifespan, we need to build another bridge. Do we consider how much would it take to build another bridge? Then when we go to these contracts, do we consider all this? This bridge is not a cast cow that we continue taking from, taking from, taking from. It has to be maintained and maintenance and orders. And we'll look at that as well. And he said, which is, which is a good thing, there's a kind of a clause uh, or a fallback position that if the company dis I mean, make 15% profit within the, 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 uh, the time, might be within eight years, within 10 years, what can happen is it can come back to government. Now, if we listen to this further down, government estimate, they are making almost 50, um, uh, uh, almost 50 million a month. Let's say they are conservatively make, they are making, let's say rounding up, let's say they are making a million dollars a month. In 100 months, which is eight years, the 100 million will be realized. But, but that's where it is. The operational costs and other cost maintenance costs, other oversight uh, payments of, uh, and all these things will have factor in it. They are, if they were looking at it in that way, then the contract would have been 15 years or 10 years, but no. The reason they're going to 25 years is there's devil in the detail. And people that live in apartments in Europe and probably in America will tell you this. When you live in an apartment where there's a service charge, inflation will come in. Inflation is knocking. But not only that inflation, but in this case, we have another problem, which is the exchange rate mechanism. That inflation is going to affect the dollar. And that dollar is, is Gambia, is, as the economy has been managed, we are going to be needing more dollars to buy the dollar. And the more they need more dollars to buy the dollar, the longer it will take for them to return it. And these are all things that we need to think about properly. Let me, let me um, continue here and play the audio again. On which this transaction right the research. And government has a shareholding of 12.5% in that special proposed vehicle. So at any given year, after servicing the obligations of the facility, any residual profit will be shared between the shareholders of the SPV. And the shareholders of the SPV are Africa 50, 87.5%, and the government of the Gambia, 12.5%. So in a nutshell, the government of the Gambia, apart from having an upfront cash flows of 100 million, will also be entitled to dividend proceeds of 12.5% from the residual income. This is how we structure this transaction. It is not an asset disposal, it's not an asset sale, and it's a very normal financial transaction. And in fact, when we signed this agreement, a number of African countries on the spot 
approach Africa 50 to say we want to replicate what Gambia has done. We have large infrastructure assets just like Gambia has, and we have not been able to come up with this idea. So after this, come to our country. We had it with uh, Togo was there. They are working on Zimbabwe, and they are working also, I think, Mozambique. Yes, this has a trip of this I recall that uh, approach Africa 50 on the spot. So in a nutshell, uh, I think the concept of us selling a large national asset is a non-starter. Uh, let me say this. Either the minister have said something untrue, but the, or the minister have been impressed wrongly. Okay, now, um, another point he raised is um, after recovery, uh, recovering of uh, investment and any rich, rich, uh, rich residual profits, the government of the Gambia is going to get 12.5% and um, the 87% will go to this management company or, or Africa 50. Now, I am not clear on this. I put my hands, I'm not clear. If someone understands it better, let us know, uh, either on the live program or after I will find clarity on this. What does this mean? This is my thinking. It, does it mean that the 25 years contract will continue whilst they manage it and we be, pay, we be paid 12.5% or what? What does that mean? Uh, that need clarity. I don't understand it and I hope someone would do to clarify it or I'll seek clarification later and share it on, on, on a post. But the minister said that many African countries Am I? He's selling this now. This is a contradiction. He said this is not new. It happens all the time. And this minister wants to tell us, uh, Keta, that all these financial ministers from other de well, well developed African countries don't know of these arrangements. But it's new to them. So much and impressed. Impressed so much that when they had Gambia have signed up onto this. And they jump on to say, oh, we want a piece of this. Either he is been mis uh, uh, he's been bamboozled with this, or he's not telling us the truth. I'll tell you why. First, that's why I said this sort of press conferences are a PR, part of selling the vehicle. Africa 50 is a group of Africans that come together to form this financial ent uh, ent entity. It's not a magic on, on doing that. And I know they will be able to raise they uh i was talking to someone who does this in america and he have his con he have his doubts that these people can able to raise this but after thinking about it they can raise money for for it I, after thinking about it i said yes they can i think about it, yes they can because they will likely not come into the west to raise this money they're going to africa there to raise this money there's a lot of africans now especially those in businesses that they want to recycle their money, they want to clean their money, they will look at these vehicles, and if there's no string in this thing, they will put their money in it. Those that stole monies in Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, Senegal, and others, uh, those who are in certain businesses would look at it as a way to put money, the, 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 uh, the due diligence that required or the scrutiny, red tapes would not be there, rather than if you were to invest in the European Union or in America and so on. It's possible. Now, another point is here. And um, this is in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2015. 2015, my visit to Gambia, I went to Senegal. And that's where I met the former finance minister, Mamburingai, when he um, left Gambia after having problems with Gambia and moved to Senegal. And whilst he was in Senegal, he was running a consultancy. Um, obviously looking for investors. I happen to have a friend, I'm saying this on air, people who knows Mambore can verify this. I happen to know a wealth manager who lives in the United Kingdom here. And this guy is uh, controlling a huge portfolio, a huge portfolio. Uh, most of, some of the assets that we hear that Qataris, the Qataris are buying in the United Kingdom uh, and other Middle Eastern. He worked for technically his company do, I mean, do accounting and, and, and wealth management for uh, for Middle Eastern. He's a Muslim guy. And um, he that's what he does. He he got a mountain of money, I mean, to manage for these people to 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 to, to, to make their money work, I mean, I mean, I mean, more efficiently. 
and he bought he buys property in the United Kingdom, he invests in businesses in the United Kingdom and so on. And I approached him when I spoke to Mambure and I knew what Mambure was doing in in, in, in um in Senegal. I spoke to Mambure and at that time Mambure was looking at uh uh, he was running a vehicle that he wanted investment into a project in Togo. In Togo, I think. One francophone country around Togo. Proba most probably Togo. And it was, um, I think, power generation. When I spoke to Mambure about it, I spoke to his wealth manager. And he was interested. <laughs> he was interested. And um, I linked this wealth manager with Mambure. And... Um, linked with Mambre and um, I got some of the communication with me, linked this way with Mambre and they tried to get this going. But unfortunately, due to this, this passing due diligence, some of these things did not fit in and the investment did not happen. When Gambia, then 2017, 2017, Mambre became the finance minister, 2017 or 2018, when he was the finance minister, yeah. Uh, Gambia was coming to the United Kingdom. The Gambia government was coming to the United Kingdom. Mambure was with Ami Ben Suda and others. Um, uh, I think uh, the Justice Minister then uh, Bartambi and others. And they were coming to the United Kingdom. Uh, there was a license, the, the exploration license they were to sell, which they took from uh, Frank Timis. And when they came here, I spoke to the guy about it. I said, oh, there's another investment opportunity here uh, from the Gambia. He wanted to do something in the Gambia. And, um, I said to him, can you, it was too late, I contacted Mambure, and I forget Mambure remembered, and get in, he said, look, it's, this is what we're doing. Mambure said, this is what he's doing, if he is really ready to go into this, um, the things I've already done, but I can get him in. I can get him in to come and see what we're doing, to see whether he's interested to, to put a bit in, uh, to, to put a bit in. Obviously, it did not work out. What I'm saying here in a nutshell, be Togo, be all those countries, uh, this thing will not be a new thing to him. Then let the minister not hide this to us as if this is a brilliant, I mean, like an idea they got from nowhere. No. No. This is not. This is not like a something light bulb moment they have and they went to Africa 50. No. And I'll tell you, another thing will come in here. Ask yourself, how did Africa 50 come to it? If the government thought about this, like this, this is their idea, this is brilliant. How did they how did they go to Africa 50? Why did they go to Africa 50? Africa 50 is not well known. Uh, so far I am doing a due diligence. I've not seen a big thing that I said they are well known. Now, how did they go to uh, how did Africa 50 get involved? No, it's not true. Africa 50 came looking for business. And Gambia is one of those small places you can easily get to the corridors of power by oil in the wheels of power. And, and get there, and they want to start with Gambia and, and, and to sell the idea. You have to scrutinize this. We have to scrutinize this. He's trying to bamboozle us with this I mean, PR. Let's move on. As I said, we will um, have a detailed discussion on this. Uh, probably tomorrow, a recorded interview with Freedom Radio, and it's going to be air on Freedom Radio. It is just the management of the cash flows and not just the financial aspect of the bridge. There is also an O&M aspect of the transaction. The concession here will manage the asset in such a way that the condition will be as good as they acquired it when they are reverting back to the state. So part of it will be an annual operational maintenance cost that the concessioner will bear all the engineering that goes with that. So. This was well studied. This transaction has been going on for a year. So what we signed was the heads of terms and the joint development agreement. So and basically, and the, 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 in a nutshell, the summary or the gist of what the transaction entailed. Okay, CD, I know you have said that the arrangement does not mean that the uh, Africa 50 will hold on to the bridge for 25 years, even though 25 years is what you have agreed. If after 10 years they recover their investment, the bridge reverts. Let me tell you that before we move to that question. The, he point to a very important point we need to ask ourselves. That's the maintenance. That's the maintenance. Now, the company, uh, remember, remember, Africa 50 
it's not it's like it's taking responsibility of the management but africa 50 are not going to they are going to subcontract another company to manage it management companies subcontract orders and people who are uh, uh, know this the reason they put it to 25 years they know they know and you'll be surprised up to 25 years they might turn out to say of this because they know how to get rid of some of this expense spread it out now they are going to be responsible for the maintenance as well the, what does this mean they'll have a company that will manage in the revenue collection and everything they'll have a company to do the maintenance and he said uh, an, an annual management cost how who's going to determine the cost this is where it comes again when we doing this are we really making sure these things are looked after who's going to have responsible cost now if the maintenance is in, uh, the responsible for the uh, maintenance who is going to make sure the oversight body to make sure the maintenance are carried out well to guarantee it, what he said that this bridge is going to be returned to gambia as we has the way they uh, inherit uh, as they took it over then you have to make sure someone is monitoring the maintenance now that's another entity monitoring the maintenance now who is going to pay that entity is it gambia government or this company you see the more we go into details of this the more we have questions to ask and more questions needed to be answered that's why we need this issue to be discussed well we meant well for gambia that's all the reason we are raising this this is not against the government but holding government accountable and we want a discussion to this and we are thanking west coast radio for taking this up and we hope other journalists will follow through let's move on uh, to this question back to uh, uh, government uh, management but why only 100 million dollars can't you make more than 100 million dollars managing it locally over the next 25 years? No, uh, we, we knew it, there was a model that was used in order to arrive at the value of the transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, okay, we're talking about the bridge today. What we, know, what we notice is this bridge was fetching far less than 20 million a month in the past. I am happy that Honorable Silla is with you in the studio. It was when we changed the management of this bridge in terms of revenue collection that the revenues have jumped from less than 20 million to more than 40. Subsequent to that, we observed that the revenue trend started going down. Again. So we have observed that, and we all know, when it comes to managing large infrastructure assets in the West, it's done like this. There is no government agency that will be there to collecting assets. These are all uh, our source to private sector because they are more efficient and they do these things. They are, they, this is their core competence. We do not have as a core competence within government management of these assets. Never. We never had them. And in management, you give, you delegate to those operators that have core competence in a domain where excellence will be. And this is what exactly we believe we've done. Okay. So let me, let me uh, it, uh, when it comes to the amount, that was a modeling exercise, mm -hmm. and that came out to that. Yes. Thank you very much. He explained the, how they come to, um, Peter asked, how did they come to conclusion to 100 million? And um, he said, obviously, they had a modeling uh, formula they followed. And the modeling formula informed them that, um, interesting, they were raising less than 20 million a month, but they step in there, interventions which the Minister uh, Infrastructure is going to explain later, and um, they got to 40 million, and but now it's dropping again. That means there's a leakage. But when they pluck the leakage, leakage, it went to 40 million, and now some they managed probably the, those people now managed to find a way again to start the leakage happening again is dropping. This is probably the explanation. But what he's trying to say here is the private sector does it better. That's an argument. But do we consider uh, the pros and cons of the private sector doing it better? To the what extent uh, um, detriment to the public or the economy, I mean, other side of the investment. You might realize so much from the investment due to the toll charges and so on being done effectively and so on. Private sector get their cut and government get their cut in the collection. But 
That's why I said we have to do uh, um, the, 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 uh, the, um, the assessment, have to look at the economic impact itself. How does this money then going to impact on the economy? One, two, we have to uh, um, evaluate uh, how does it impact on society as well. There are people or other people as well, the economy and the society as well. Let me give you an example. It's true. This is what happens in the, uh, in the, in the developed countries. But it does not come with its challenges, and it does not come with its criticism. That's why we hold it accountable. In the United Kingdom, when the, uh, Gordon Brown brought out the PPP decisions, what they found out is it was good for government. I mean, it was easy, good for them to sow their blank seats, to control their blank seats in a way. But after they realized, yes, we ha ma might have hospitals, schools, and everything built within a short span and delivery. But the cost down to the public was that for the amount we have paid for that hospital, we could have built three hospitals if we have done it a in a different way. It might take a little bit longer, but we have been more sustainable to build three hospitals than one hospital and pay that much. That came out. In the United Kingdom, most of, I mean, on everything that's revenue collections in this sense, yes, it's done by private sector, but it's scrutinized to make sure the account is accountable and public benefits and everything else. And when it comes to um, the public, the assess on the public, like let's say if it's a, a, a transport system, like passenger, public transport system, they'll make sure children, prices for children, prices for pensioners, prices for some people not in work, prices for disabled, and those things are factored part of this contract. Make sure these people are not adversely affected in this when the inflation kicks in and it has to be increased. This thing has to be done. And again, they will have to factor that, I mean, there should be an amount thrown out there so that people who are less fortunate, who can access to I mean, able to travel on this because they are going to do essential services or they will need this, uh, uh, the route of this transportation is this thing. And if, if government have to subsidize that, government have to subsidize that. They have to do that ev those evaluations. In this case, are we talking about this? this are, that's why we need a consultation so that these things can be raised. I'll come to a point. You see, if you continue this, in America, where even the prisons are privatized, this is privatization. That's all what it is. Call it any name, it's privatization. Getting private sector into it. When they brought prisons into the private sector and others, what happened? The corruption in America. I'll tell you that. People in America will tell you the corruption. And the corruption, in fact, uh, uh, get to judges taking part in the corruption, trying to lock up more people into the prison system so that these prison companies will make, make more money. Even judges were taking uh, this thing, especially in juvenile uh, prisons or ju juvenile de detention centers. That's why we need to be very careful what we go, I mean, I mean, what we, we let ourselves in. Now, let's look at it in the case of Gambia. As I said, Senegal have to be consulted properly. And I tell you, if did not consult Senegal properly, these things are going to go through. And I think much have not happened in this. It's all a public relationship. It's all government, Gambia government blowing their uh, this thing yet. Most of it is not done yet. If Ga this is like an MOU. If Gambia government go through all what they need to do, even sign this, now these people did not have a hundred million in, in a safe waiting for them to use. No, they will take this to go and look for that hundred million. That's why I said we could have considered doing it differently. Just as Peter Gomez said, can't we just do this locally? If we can realize, if we can realize almost a million a month, million dollars a month, Almost. And if, they, if we can uh, pluck the uh, leakages from 20 million to 40 million, and now we see there's still leakages, why can't we look at it and, and I, mean, I mean, do it better? And the other cost, and we'll have control over the other cost, the maintenance, the operational, and others. If a private company, if Africa 50 takes up this, they are going to subcontract the operational uh, this thing of this, both the maintenance and the operations of the revenue collection. And if they do that, the overheads will be so much. 
and we will need Gambia government still, if they want to be in it, they, they are not part of the management, they would have an oversight body that will be looking into these operations to make sure that they are not cheating us. But if the oversight body is absolutely corrupt, as we know of this Gambia government, the oversight body would look the other way and they do as they wish. Just as we witnessed in the airport levy, where they do what they want. Increase without even letting us know. Now, the, that's the competency uh, area. Let's move on to the other bit. Let's listen a little bit more. Let me hear from uh, Honorable Silla on revenue from the bridge. Before the Ministry of Finance intervened, um, you know, we were getting less than 20 million. Then uh, they took it up to, what, 45, but it started going down again. What's, up, what's going on? No, actually, um, I think uh, the whole history of uh, looking at the revenue stream of the bridge came about when I was uh, appointed uh, Minister of uh, Works and then Honorable Keta appointed as Minister, Minister of Finance. So we went on a joint uh, track to look at um, one, the ongoing road construction projects and also the revenue generating projects of the government. And then when we went to the bridge, we realized uh, certain anomalies. One, the um, ticketing system was not there. Uh, the CCTV uh, system. The ticketing system was not there. How was well, traffic flowing across the bridge? They were doing the manual ticketing. Um, it, so it hadn't been yeah, the, the TMS the electronic ticketing was not uh, functioning. Okay. So we decided that uh, immediately that should be put in place. And then uh, the contractor, Areski, was uh, contacted uh, to put in place uh, the TMS system and also the toll plazas for them to be functional. And we did a test run, and we realized that um, from 17 million, the first month uh, jumped up to, uh, I think, 42 million dollars. Oh, wow. And but all along, you know, the, the the collection at the bridge was by the accountant general's department in collaboration with uh, the ferry services. So we had to intervene to, uh, you know, downsize. The number of personnel there because uh, with the tms now with the you know toll plaza and also the cctv plus uh, the barrier because the barrier serve as a kind of like a, an accountability mechanism for example if a vehicle is approaching and the barrier goes up mm -hmm. then it counts as a transaction yes so these things were not there and however even with all these things in place now we have uh, realized that there are still leakages and this also, of course, includes uh, the type of vehicles that are, you know, crossing the bridge. Uh, some of them, for example, uh, the heavy-duty trucks, uh, they needed to be weighed and weighed appropriately. Although we have this uh, facility with uh, Afri Passage that actually weighs the, the, the vehicles. So if you go above a certain level of uh, weight, you have to pay extra. So those cash transactions, actually, there is a tendency of uh, a leakage okay, yes. so now i mean uh, with uh, that's actually brought about uh, this facility of us discussing with um, africa 50 because uh, the finance minister is so you were, that you were part of the discussion yeah africa we 50. from the onset from the onset um in fact uh, part of the reason why we came up with uh, what we now a controversial term asset recycling was uh, following my appointment i had a very detailed discussion with uh, uncle baxture and he thought one of the best ways to support the infrastructure deficit funding is basically to look at our infrastructure projects like first the senegambia bridge the conference center the oic conference center uh, the two bridges in the urr and also other facilities that are generating income for the government but we are not paying attention to them so how do we monetize this to ensure that we reinforce the collection that we are getting and then work with the ministry of finance to plow it back into infrastructure funding so that we will not have to i mean our recourse to i mean the budget you know directly okay. you know to fund the project okay. I, think the that, that, I think that was good advice from uh, Pax. Yeah. Uh, just to address another question minister now, now, let's um, just revisit this point again by the Minister uh, Silla. Now, what are they telling us? Now, if they can intervene, because as he said, it was manual, they intervene and put some mechanisms in there to pluck 
and that improved the revenue collection from 20 to 40. Now they realize there's still some bit of. The new people coming, Africa 50, are they going to put aliens in place? Or are they going to bring, bring foreigners to do the ticketing and everything for us? What is that that Africa 50 will bring in to make sure that they improve the revenue collection that our people cannot do? That's what we need to ask. It's not that, again, I said we can raise this money within Gambia, Gambians, among Gambians. 100 million can be raised within the diaspora and Gambian businesses and Gambian individuals who have the means I mean, to invest. And I can tell you, United Kingdom have uh, improved its, 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 its uh, middle class here due to this sort of investment, I mean, buying of shares, Gambia uh, Airways, Gambia of uh, buying shares, uh, uh, um, British, uh, um, British Gas, in the utility privatization, they sold shares to citizens, and these people turn out to be, uh, um, how to call it, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean middle-class people today. And Gambians, diasporans can, can be part of this and so on, and the money will stay in the Gambia. That's one. Now, the management, if we can manage to move it from 20 to 40, and there's still something, why can't we look at that and plug that? If we decide to do it even private, why can't we do it within the country? Indigenous businesses come in and, and we do it better. You see, that's where the problem is. This is the kickbacks, these companies. I, I tell you, Africa 50 does not have 100 million in their safe. They don't have a safe. They take this investment and go and look for shareholders. That's what they're doing. Now, Africa 50, to get this business, might put in a million dollar. Firm in, within government. In government to take this decision to give it to them, let them go. Why did government did not come out to see how many companies? No, they make an arrangement with one entity, one. They did not go for an open, open bidding and look at other areas. They did not do that. Then if they come in, how are they going to do it? It's, it's this. Again, let's go to the social. What I mean about the social again is, if we continue this sort of investments, we have to be very careful. You know, we have to be um, empathetic. Be capitalists who are empathetic. I'm a capitalist. But, but what they call this, uh, we have to have the social responsibilities right. Uh, we have to look at the impact on our economy. We don't want to drive what has happened in Senegal. Where you see this major in, in investments, developments, because of the Senegalese government, money to go to France, money to go to the European Union and get capitals from there and come and build a big stadium, two stadiums, wrestling stadium, basketball stadium, football stadium. And for what? For the farmers to farm, the other people, taxes to be taken and paid because this uh, infrastructure are not paying in. To go and, because they do that because of the corruption, they go and in, bring a company and borrow that much and that company to be responsible to build a railway that runs from outside of Dakar to the capital of billions of safe. Now, it's not going to realize profit for this thing, but every guarantee is government is going to pay the loads. When that amount of money could have been built, a railway to run from Dakar to, to Kaula and people from Kaula to come, come to work for Dakar. No, they will not think about that. Because to do that, they have to do it properly and they might not have anything from it to my mean personally but these things will go they will look good because that's what they go oh you see what development we brought but you go to many areas within within that jurisdiction in fact people cannot find jobs or jobs or anything this is why we talk about the social and the impact it's going to have on our, on our economy now if you put put in certain charges and this company started to raise things up senegal will object to it because it's going to affect uh, the, 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 the public transportation. It's going to affect private transportation. It's going to affect their, 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 their industries. The, the raw materials from customers or goods, finished goods from, from Senegal or the northern part of Senegal going to customers, all these things are going to affect it. What about Gambians? Now, if Gambians started to pay more, now Gambians would not able to uh, uh, have the log uh, to be crossing the bridge. Ra look at what is happening in Basin now. People welcome the bridge now. They're paying that much for the bridge. Some people cannot pay for the bridge now. They're walking across the bridge or going back back to the uh, boats. I am not saying that we should not do these things, but let's do it in a way that is beneficial to the people. That's why we need this conversation to continue and, and let it continue. Let's go for the 
Next. Why not asset recycle the prisons? Excuse me, Peter. You see, this asset recycling does not mean you are disposing of the asset. This your investors are going to fund the cash flows that you're getting up front. So those investors need to be sure that there will be a predictable set of cash flow or stream of cash flows. You only do, so that is the lame and way of looking at uh, asset recycling to say this is a disused asset, let me dispose it and then other people can find alternative use while I move on. That's an asset disposal. That's not the concept of asset recycling. What Africa 15 means by this asset recycling is not just disused assets that are gone into disrepair, disrepair and that government needs to exit and allow the private operators to run them and that is technically tantamount to a sale. Okay. But we are saying people are parting with their funds to invest. Okay. So they need to do it in an asset that is cash flow generating and those cash flows will be predictable over the tenor of the concession period. Okay, so how are you going to use the hundred million dollars coming from Let's move check this you realize that he did not answer the question? The question is, why not recycle the prisons? He went on to say that, oh, this is not asset dispose, uh, disposals of assets. The, questions was, the question was not that, is it this disposal of assets? No. Why not recycle the prison? Why not uh, get a company that will come in to refurbish, rerun, and run our prisons? It's happening in other countries. It's happening in the United Kingdom. It's happened because he said this concept is happening in developing countries. In developed countries, sorry. In developed countries. Why not introduce it there? Why not the prisons? But <laughs> why <clears throat> this is already. You see, my problem with this is Senegal Bay Bridge is already making money. We can even make more money if we put it put ourselves to it. Now, why not why take a cow? I mean, this is you see. <laughs> Why take, uh, why take the, something lucrative like this and this point because you, you want money quickly. Yes, if you just think that you need money quickly, try something else. Try Gambia to, to give you that money so that the money would stay in, within the Gambia rather than the private investor going out there looking for investors. This is where I, I have a problem with this. But he did not answer the question. The, the reason the, uh, Peter asked the question is to check what do you think about this. But no. Peter to fail to follow up, no, I am asking why not the prisons? He should have explained why not the prisons. But they are going to go on to other lucrative. Nawek and others will go. Let's just see how they're going to go with that. But let's um, just um, hear, the, hear him here. From Africa 50. Well, uh, we have just articulated that very clearly about the huge infrastructure deficit. Of but, you, but you already, and, and but you already yeah. have you have you already have money for this year. You've been to the national assembly and asked to be given a certain budget, which includes building roads during the current uh, you know financial year. So the hundred million dollars is earmarked for when? No, these are for not just one year. Road construction is not one year. If you sign a road construction uh, contract, those will go into multi years. No road is commenced and completed in one year. So what we have approved as a budget is an annual budget. How will we fund the rest of the roads that are to be developed? And the is is very clear. The fact that we are, because we are addressing the infrastructure deficit, we cannot displace the resource to say, okay, now that you've got this, uh, you have other sectors equally now to, then you are not developing the infrastructure space. Technically, that amounts to you diluting your investment in the structural space. Okay. What we are saying is, once this goes on to fund the remaining infrastructure works into the future, mm -hmm. it will leave the limited resources that are available to go into other social sectors. All right. Which Let, the budget can address and the partners are equally addressing. Let me just ask a question of the... Uh, now, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. Uh, thank you, Koto. I mean, we are... We, we, we sell the go, uh, goose that lays the golden eggs. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Why sell it? 
um, we can manage it I mean, and do better. Or we, if we need to sell it, let's sell it to Gambians. Let Gambians buy the shares to, to I mean, to the company. And Gambians become well, uh, middle class, burden, they spend uh, under profit and spend it, and rather than 15% of uh, 100 million going to foreigners to, to use. But let's come back to this. He's making a point that the money is going to be invested into more roads and bridges. This is what I'm saying. That's their point. Roads and bridges, this government roads, the only roads and bridges that have been built competently are ones that are designed, built, financed by the Chinese and handed over, or the ones already designed and de uh, um, I mean, contracted and everything before during the Jammer time. That's his, I mean, I mean Kotopasamas and, and that uh, other road. Look at the roads, all the, the ones they built. None of them will last two, three years. All the roads going on now. All the roads going on. And the, everything is inflated. Look at the Banyan project. Look at how inflated that is. A cast cow and everything else. That's why they're interested in something like it. It's a, it's a political thing. So that when, before, within the five years of this thing, they will bring their new candidate, they bring out their new candidate to say, that, you see this government have built more roads here, have built this, build these things. No. Now, he's saying that they will take this money, put it into those infrastructures, to build new infrastructures, I mean, to uh, the, uh, for the deficit. Then he said the money raised from somewhere else would go to the social design. That's <laughs> We all know where that money goes to. This government, if they were serious about that, they would have reduced reduce the money they spent on themselves, spent on the president, spent on waste and everything else. They would have fight to stop that, combat that corruption and, and, and reclaim all that money. Abba Sanyang is taking, they, I'll tell you, nothing will come out of uh, Abba Sanyang. If you take Abba Sanyang, you should take um, Ahmad Ba, you should take uh, I mean, Mamburenja, you should take um, I mean, Bailamin Job, you should take President Barrow, you should take Sidi Keta himself, you should take them all. Fist, fist, former fist, fist minister, you should take La Drame and all these people. But they, that's not going to happen. If you, you have saved that much to go to into schools and others, it's not true. Now, let's ask this. Now, this bridge is already making money. We are collecting good money from it, almost a million dollars a month, almost. In whatever it is we can improve on. It's proven that if you do something about it, you improved and the revenue collection would be higher. If they want to bring build other roads, why not ask that comp this thing to build the roads and, and put a toll on it? That's what many, many countries do. But in Senegal, what we call the APS, the road that connects the, uh, that bit of Dakar, open up Dakar and so on, it's, it's built already, or the, to, uh, um, the road to Tuba. The road to Tuba, it's already built, and they put the, uh, I mean, they put the chart on, uh, they put the this thing on it. Let them go and build their roads. Let them go and build a bridge, and then put the chart on it. But not we have a bridge and everything built already. We making money already. You want? That's what we should ask. Let them go and build a bridge and put a toll on it. Let them build a bridge and put a toll on it. At least we can negotiate that as uh, separately, and this money would still be coming. Or if we think that the government needs some money now, and we know where the money is going, let's build a national, um, I mean, private, I mean, in a sense, give, put it to an entity that would open up for Gambians, Gambians to invest. From the diaspora, my bias shares, I might have my 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, 15,000, 20,000, and the available shares, we put our money. Order will do it. Ethiopia built a dam, made most of it from the diaspora funded. They bought shares in it. The other countries, uh, Egypt, did similar things with roads and other things. Other countries are doing it. This is where you, you need the diaspora to do that. And the diaspora make a little bit more. Where is the diaspora going to spend that? They're going to spend it in the country. Why not give it to foreigners to, to, to sell the, If they sell the shares, Gambians will not see it. Gambians will not see those shares if they ever sell them. This is the point. Let's move on. Infrastructure Minister, uh, is infrastructure only about roads as far as this government is concerned? No, it's not only about uh, roads, uh, but roads are critical um, 
components of our infrastructure agenda. Um, we also have uh, the ICT infrastructure that, of course, is very critical for our overall development uh, program. And then we also have, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the airport modernization, the, the, the port modernization, but also, I mean, um, you know, agriculture value chain, I mean, uh, developing it to ensure that it fits for purpose. Now, I mean, uh, for the purpose of this particular intervention, I mean, uh, we at the Ministry of uh, Works has actually uh, put in place some uh, ideas, one of which is to ensure that uh, if the funds are spent on a particular road infrastructure project, then we use that as a tool to generate more so that, you know, whatever we have serve as a savings. So future roads will all be toll roads? Not all, all roads, but uh, we have some critical roads like uh, the, the, the bypass the, that goes all the way to, you know, the airport, behind the airport, all the way to Mandina Bar to free off uh, the uh, roads uh, from uh, the Westfield all the way to, to Brikama mm -hmm. so that, um, like goods and services that are destined for third countries from the port of Banjul will now quickly go through this uh, bypass road. And then, you know, it will be tolerized. Okay. So that at the end of the day, whatever Africa 50, I mean, uh, front loading funds uh, are, are used on these roads, then within a few years, we can also have uh, some funding, seed funds again, to spend on other roads. So these are type of uh, innovative ways that we are working with the Ministry of Finance on. All right. Asidi, you say the concept of asset recycling may be new in the Gambia, but um, it's been on for a while. What? Um, yeah, um, he's saying the same thing again. Tollage, we're going to tollage this, tollage this, tollage this. Then just go and ask them to build those roads and toll them. To build those roads, tell them invest their money. But you don't ask them to give me money up front. They say they're going to have 100 million. Let's make sure that even they have that 100 million if it's signed, when it's signed. 100 million cash, not okay, it's 100 million. But now the new information is we, they're going to give us uh, this much in, in one year. They're going to give so that. You see, this government, until we hold them accountable, we know what's going to happen. Let's just not take them for what they just say here. Let's see things in detail. That's why we expect people to engage in the discussion. That's why we expect them to bring in uh, the discussion first to, to consult us. We expect civil society to do that. We expect political parties to do that. We expect the parliament to do that and order to bring in clarity. And if it's necessary, let's change a lot of other things that we think are not fit for purpose, for, fit, for it to be fit for purpose. This is the only reason we're discussing this. I mean, I mean, some people might have an idea that they don't like this capitalist, uh, this thing. I'm a capitalist. I mean, I, I, I like the private sector getting into things. But again, there are ways that you make the private sector responsible. But another benefit is to make the private sector, the, the, the indigenous private sector, the Gambian Businesses registered in the Gambia, business registered in the Gambia, businesses that Gambians own, to, to, and Gambians themselves, they aspire Gambians to have share of this so that Gambians will be wealthier, Gambians will grow up middle class, and, and Gambia can, I mean, other Gambians, that middle class would, that money would trickle down. Because once you have the middle class, they build another home, they do this, they do, they buy services, they, they buy this, they buy this, other Gambians get employment. That's how we create employment. We don't want to create what is happening in Senegal today. The unemployment in, in the cities of Dakar and others, which is a ticking time bomb. That's why when it, there ever there's a demonstration, whether they support, support Sonko or not, they will come out. Because they have some grievance against that government. Because they've seen the billions being wasted, and they are not seeing the impact of that billions. And they lived in the midst of this development, which has been sold to them that it's going to change and transform their life. But whose life will it transform? Again, the 1%. Up again the one percent that's what we have a problem with this form of capitalist or capital investment we want those that would have impact in society itself to better society that would not i mean stifle our economy because if it start tolls going up now our transportation costs going up and then that will go back to our food 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 prices going up because if you transport something, you come to Farafene, you have to cross, it's increased, you're going to pass it on to the consumer. These are the things we want to avoid. We can do it for ourselves, we can do it better. But, um...
Recycling may be new in the Gambia, but um, it's been on for a while. What are some of the problems governments encounter when considering uh, asset recycling programs? Well, when it, like any financial structure, there are challenges. With it. That's why, uh, for example, what we one typical uh, challenge for one for toll roads is the traffic projection. You might at the starting phase underestimate the traffic volume. That's why we have uh, addressed that by putting on target IRR return for the investors. Okay. Because, for example, if we had left it at a linear period of only 25 years and come the traffic volume shoot up, then the investors would be disproportionately compensated at the expense of the state. Okay. Okay. But that's why we said no, as an investor coming to this, your target IRR will be 15%. Mm -hmm. That's your return expectation. And once we, we don't forget, behind all of this, there will be a transparent financial reporting. Okay. There will be a tool system which will be electronic, digital, and we will all be having, that's why government is in the shareholding of the sponsorship vehicle. But will government be in the management of the bridge? No. another point we have to look at. If government goes through this, he's talking about, he asks him, what are the challenges do the uh, other governments that went through this, this um, so-called mortgage, it's a mortgage, let's just put a mortgage uh, cost. Uh, he talked about all uh, the traffic, on, uh, estimation of traffic. I mean, estimation of traffic and so on. Now, he did not talk about another thing, the impact on the economy. That's as it is happening in Senegal, as it happened in other countries. Because where, where the people don't have an alternative, they don't have another choice. Now, if you put a Denton Bridge, if you put, let's put Denton Bridge on tour. Now, if you have to cross Denton Bridge, you have to uh, pay. The, what they also do is now the drivers would have to put their prices up. Now, the person going to the hospital, now prices are up, they have to pay, regardless of what they have to go to the hospital. But now they have to pay more because there's a toll there now and the drivers are asking for more money in order to uh, subscribe to the toll. You see that social, how it impacts on social? Now, it impacts on all the movements and which is those movements might be to war again, I mean, I mean, I mean that um, impact on, on our economy. These are things that he did not talk about. When there's no alternative, because now if you have to cross uh, to, from Yili Tender, Bamba Tender, you, don't ha you cannot swim, you can't take the boats, that's the only way to cross will be the bridge. Now you are forced to pay. These are the things that, no, we have to, and he talked about something, or there's going to be transfer, transfer. there'll be financial reporting and all these things. Who are they going to report to? It's not the same government. Now, if this government say that they cannot, they cannot manage, or they, they don't have any other formula to manage to make sure we realize it as a revenue. Now, but they can give it to someone else to manage. But they are, the government now is the uh, oversight body to look into these people's business. How can we trust that government to look into that business? Now, if they corrupt the people, the oversight, they can do whatever they want. If the government wants us to believe that they can do that, let, us, let, them show us to, show, let them show us their competency with the contracts they already signed. Let them show the competency with the airport project, uh, the airport levy, $20 levy. The, we sat one time, and for almost three months, the, the levy was increased from 2000 to 2000 something. The, for the government to turn around, we didn't know. Now, if similar things happen with this company, how would we know? 
this is the, this is this is the doubt this is why we have doubt with this government is their corruption and their incompetence this is the doubt we have that's why we need to really scrutinize this to make sure we have everything on board and we can have uh, um transparency to hold them accountable not be able to do apart from unilaterally increasing the toll charge no there is a whole concession agreement that will identify who can do what in the concession. Maybe we need a future program, a longer program to deal with that. I'm not explaining this. Unfortunately, CD, I know. Very quickly, in one minute, yes, go ahead, one minute. No, all I'm saying is we will not be uh, doing a transaction that will be at the detriment of the Gambians. No. Whatever we are doing ultimately is for the benefit of this nation. All right. And, and we are fully aware of. We cannot take that statement to be real. Syndicator cannot tell us that. These people have been taking decisions and to the detriment of Gambian people. They have taken decisions uh, uh, for, from, from the security charges at the airport. Now they are introducing the same thing, another PPP uh, on the Ports Authority. I mean, for the people to pay for something they don't need to pay for is the tracking system which is going to increase the shipment of a container from a country like United Kingdom uh, at uh, 500 uh, pounds. And that 500 pounds is going to be ch cost to pass on to the consumer. And uh, a company, another foreign company, is giving that contract. For what? For that company to make money on us and take it out. This, co uh, this statement is not true. CD cannot tell us that they are looking uh, uh, for our interests. For everything they do, they have not been looking at uh, for our interests. We are fully aware of what the expectation or what the management will be like. And there will be a, a, a binding agreement between the government and the concession here. It is not an asset sale, a one-way traffic, they decide or do what they deem fit. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is happening elsewhere. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sila. We'll, we'll, we'll have to stop you there. And uh, Sila... Yeah, um, he's saying this, that... They will do things right. They know uh, they are responsible, whatever. We cannot take that. They have not proven that. And again, he contradicted himself. He said when they went to uh, that place, when they, it was announced, other countries want to do it. As if it's a new thing. Now he's saying that, oh, this has been ha happening in other places. That's why I said in the beginning, he has been misrepresenting things or deliberately not telling us the truth, as, as if they had this gene genius idea and, uh, and they're selling it to us. Let me see what this guy have just said. Okay, this guy is, uh, sent me a map and said the red spots is the airport. Uh, what bypass through the back of the airport to Mandinaba uh, is Ibrahim Masila talking about? Uh, thank you very much, Koto. I don't know. People might know. They will tell us. I'll look into it. Uh, what he said. I thought he was referring to the present uh, construction they're doing. They're going to do a bypass. I don't know. I'll check check with that. Thank you. Yeah, guys, I'm fortunate that is it. It's taking um, almost <laughs> longer than I thought. Uh, but as I said, uh, this uh, um, we will carry this out, continue this conversation, and um, we share our views about this. This conversation we uh, continue. Um, Alaji Alu, Alaji Alu, Alaji Alu, um, Alaji Salu Njai will be hosting me tomorrow in Sala on a recorded program on the Freedom Radio, where we'll have extensive uh, this thing. As I said, it, 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 it brings up other things when someone else is asking the question than doing a monologue. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good day. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.